What? Who says you can't wear Hawaiian shirts after Labor Day? America's top model? Huh. I question your choice of TV shows. Try Dancing with the Stars. Hi, I'm Joe Alden, MD, also known as Dr. Bones, the disaster doctor of doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over 500 articles on medical preparedness for any disaster. I'm also the co-author, along with the lovely Nurse Amy, of the number one Amazon bestseller in safety, first aid, and survival skills, the Survival Medicine Handbook, as well as the designer of the fun new board game, Doom and Bloom Survival, a great off-grid option to get your whole family involved in the survival mindset. This is America's favorite troublemaker, and boy is he, T.D. Bird, and this guy, well, he needs no introduction. I've been writing a lot about epidemics lately, Ebola, Enterovirus, D68, and others, and I talk about immunity issues a lot in my articles. But what do you know about it? Your immune system is a marvel and probably saves your life every day from one harmful germ or another, and even zaps some microscopic cancers. So let's talk a little bit about immunity as it relates to infectious disease. Immunity is the ability of your system, your body, to resist a particular infection or toxin. This can refer to resistance of an entire species, humans for example, don't get very many diseases that fish get, or the resistance of a particular individual to an illness. Typhoid Mary, for example, was a domestic cook who carried the germ for typhoid fever and passed it on to many others without ever getting sick herself. Immunity is affected by many factors such as age, genetics, and stress from nutritional, environmental, or chronic illness, something we'll all experience in a survival setting. There are several levels of immunity. They are short-term immunity. When an infectious agent is detected, the body responds by producing a large amount of white blood cells, an immune response which attacks the invader. During an epidemic, the human population's ability to generate white cells increases its resistance. It is this property of the human body that causes the epidemic to eventually collapse. Long-term immunity. The body's defenses may retain a type of memory of the offending organism. If the illness returns to the area, that memory causes the body to produce a faster and stronger response against it. This is especially true with viral infections, oftentimes giving lifetime protection. An example would be varicella, a viral illness otherwise known as chickenpox. Once you have had chickenpox, you're usually immune for the remainder of your life. Natural immunity. A particular individual, or occasionally an entire species, might possess the ability to resist a pathogen due to genetic memory passed on from generation to generation. The Native American population of the New World, for example, had an extraordinarily high death rate when exposed to smallpox by the first European invaders. In some areas, 90% of the Native population of the North American East Coast died. Those same explorers, however, had a much higher survival rate due to natural immunity given by centuries of previous exposures. Herd immunity. When a large group, a herd, possesses immunity, non-immune individuals in it enjoy a certain protection due to fewer exposures to an infection that may otherwise be fatal to them. The most common example today relates to vaccinated populations. If an unvaccinated individual moves into an area where many are immune due to vaccinations, the likelihood of exposure to, say, measles drops significantly. This confers a certain level of protection. The person isn't immune to measles, but there's very little exposure to it because everyone else is vaccinated. If many unvaccinated people move into an area, however, the overall herd immunity may be lost. Vaccinations against influenza are usually available to people in developed countries in advance of seasonal outbreaks in an effort to confer immunity to the populace. This type of immunity is called acquired immunity as it was acquired artificially by vaccine as opposed to natural immunity by exposure to a disease. With influenza, for example, these are most effective if the virus is similar to last year's strain as they use material from that to produce the vaccine. If the virus is mutated significantly, the vaccine may not be as effective. That's just a little bit on immunity. In future videos, we'll discuss important aspects of protection against those bugs that might cross the border into your area 
and some topics from our latest no-nonsense DVD on pandemic preparedness. This is Joe Alden, MD, also known as that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching.